I have a question. Do you play video games? If you're a boy, there's a 99.9% .9 chance you do. We have been playing video games all day, every day, non-stop. We know it's unhealthy, but we must play it. It's out of control. The leaderboards, the points, the badges, trophies, all of them. We want them. We prefer being stuck at home playing these games because we have no friends, or we suffer from social anxiety, or we are simply introverts. We prefer drinking Mountain Dew reading Doritos playing the games because we enjoy them. We prefer waking up at morning or noon to play 8 hours plus of these games because it's our duty. Well, we feel like it's our duty. And if we go against these principles, it's like at home, Mountain Dew with Doritos in 8 hours plus, our performance will only get worse. Our online friends will disband us and our races and matches will be lost. Our parents, siblings and girlfriends have taught us repeatedly, get a life. Get a life? What, a job? Relationships? This is my job, and I have got friends in this. I actually got better in playing football, um, soccer, basketball, knowing furniture combinations, knowing how to react in a war, how to drive cars, you know, basic stuff. This is the irony many gamers have. How come people say we are wasting life if we are learning new things? That is basically the same with going to school, right? The history of video games date as far back as the 1950s, when academic computer scientists began designing simple games and simulations as part of their research and recreation. These games were played on computers such as the IBM 1560, and moves were made by means of punch cards. Video gaming did not reach mainstream popularity until the 1970s and 1980s, when video arcade games and gaming consoles using joysticks, buttons and other controllers, along with graphics on computer screens, and home computer games were introduced to the general public. During this time, the first generation of home consoles were made, including the popular game Pong with its various clones, and Space Invaders, which had grossed over $13 billion in total revenue as of 2016, making it the highest grossing video game of all time. The arcade video game Space Invaders is considered one of the most influential games of all time, inspiring the video game industry to continue developing shooter games. Space Invaders was the first video game to popularize the concept of achieving a high score, being the first to save the player's score, was the first in which targets could fire back at the player. It was also the first game where players were given multiple lives, had to repel hordes of enemies, could take cover from enemy fire, and use destructible barriers, in addition to being the first game to use a continuous background soundtrack. with four simple diatonic descending bass notes repeating in the loop, which was dynamic and changed pace during stages, like a heartbeat sound that increases pace as enemies approach. It was also in this era that the first video game addictions were reported. In the early 1980s, there were reported three cases of Space Invaders Obsession, and it was called Computer Catatonia. Arguably the first reference to a video game addiction was in 1983 by Sopa and Miller, who, based on their observations as school counselors, claimed the disorder was like any other behavioral addiction and consisted of a compulsive behavioral involvement, a lack of interest in other activities, association and friendship circles, mainly with other video game addicts, and physical and mental symptoms when attempting to stop the behavior. Example, quote unquote, the shakes. There's a link here. Now, if you were paying attention, you probably noticed the link. The link between the 1978 hit Space Invader with the 80s first generation of game addicts. Suddenly, video games started containing high scores, targets to fire back, multiple lives, the action to take cover, the same principles that are still applied in popular action slash shooter games these days. Game developers started seeing and writing down why people played Space Invaders and started applying the same principles to the games. The act of including high scores in different levels or stages make us feel like we are progressing. Thus, more and more games started popping up on the arcades with the same elements. On the other hand, video games also have the bright side. It can help you with improving your coordination skills, problem solving skills, enhancing your memory. It's a great source of learning and multitasking skills. For example, it may require you to be very observant being able to move your joystick or keys while looking at the various features on your screen such as energy levels and adversaries. 
This ensures that the player can observe and react accordingly to all the requirements of that particular game. Did you know they have a thing called eye-hand coordination? Hand-eye coordination, also known as eye-hand coordination, is the coordinated control of eye movement with hand movement and the processing of visual input to guide reaching and grasping along with the use of proprioception of the hands to guide the eyes. Essentially, if you play a lot of football or basketball games, there's a chance that you're becoming better at those sports in the real world because you will be seeing the same movements over and over again. Of course, you will need to practice the same movements and pay attention to the way they are made in the game. Mostly this occurs unconsciously, but chances are gamers can learn faster than non-gamers depending on the games they play. There is also this concept of gamification which you apply game principles into your life. I made an entire video about that so feel free to check it out after watching this video to know exactly how it works. On summary, video games are a great way to distract ourselves and also a great way to gain knowledge while having fun. Though they are fun and entertaining, we must use it responsibly as with any drug because they are designed to put you playing them all day. So, play responsibly.